the future is here. The future is now. The FIA have finally revealed the top lines of the 2026 Formula One technical regulations. So what better time to take a long and detailed look at what changes we've got to come in just over a year's time. These new cars are going to be quite significantly different to anything we've seen before. But at the same time, there's some real familiar elements to this new design of car. These rules will create a massive challenge for all of the teams. Well, the first thing to say about these new cars is that they are a little bit smaller than the current generation of cars, which were introduced in 2022. And you can see that here, that they are, the new cars are narrower by about 100 millimeters, or about the length of a credit card, if you like, a bit more than that, perhaps. Uh, they're also likely to be slightly shorter. We don't know exactly how much, but what we can say is the maximum wheelbase, the space between the front axle and the rear axle, has been reduced by 200 millimeters, down from 3.6 meters to 3.4 meters. In American, that means they're a bit shorter. But that's not where it all stops, because these cars aren't just gonna be slightly smaller, they're also ever so slightly lighter. The 2022 generation of cars weighed in at 798 kilos. The new generation of cars will come in about 30 kilos lighter at 768 kilos. The reason I say about 30 kilos lighter is that the regulations, as I mentioned before, aren't entirely final. And one of the reasons is that Pirelli is introducing some new tires which have a slightly smaller diameter and they're slightly narrow. They still sit on 18 inch wheel rims with those Red Bull supplied wheel covers, but these tires will provide slightly less mechanical grip through the car and that is really really critical when you start thinking about the overall weight package of the car because that's allied to a reduction in downforce across the entire vehicle in fact the new cars will have about 30 percent less downforce than the current generation of car and i think it's going to be a little bit more important to state that they also have 55 percent less aerodynamic drag that's going to lead to huge savings in terms of fuel economy and could see some pretty spicy top speeds at some of the faster circuits of the year but let's take a look in detail at some of the aerodynamic details of the new package because those aerodynamic changes that reduction in mechanical grip from the tires and aerodynamic grip from the lack of downforce also mean that you can save weight as you look through the entire car some of those loads will be significantly reduced, the mechanical grip being low, the aerodynamic forces being lower. That means the uprights, the suspension mounting points on the monocoque, the gearbox casing, and a lot of other bits and pieces up and down the car can all be made ever so slightly more fragile, less beefy, less heavy, and they can all be reduced in mass, if you like to talk about it in scientific terms. And all of those little savings will add up hopefully, the FI hope at least, to that 30 kilo target. We'll see what the teams turn up with at the track in 2026. But let's take a look, as I say, at some of the details of this new car. I wanna take a look at this nose and front wing mounting point. You can see it's a slightly raised nose. Whether that's gonna be mandated in the final rules, we're not too sure yet, but you'll note that a few teams have experimented with this under the current rule book, Alpha Tauri, for example, and a few others have been mucking about with keeping the tip of the nose off the front, the leading edge of the front wing. We'll see which, what teams actually end up coming with in 2026. But more importantly, is the fact that the actual front wing itself is quite significantly narrower than the current generation of cars. If you think about the current generation of cars, the front wing elements go all the way out to the edge of the outer edge of the front wheels. On this, you can see the front wing elements sit on the inside of those front wheels. And don't forget, the car's already 100 millimeters narrower overall. So a bit less front wing. And you'll also notice the front wing's only got three elements. And we'll talk a little bit more about those front wings because they've got a little secret weapon included with them. But note here, the front wing end plates, this is a really crucial part of the design. And I'm really interested to see how much scope for development in this part of the car that the teams have got. These look far more complex than the very simple rolled tip end plates we have on the 2022 cars. But you can see these fins and some of the elements dotted about those front wing end plates. And some, some of the renders the FIA have released have little fins on the inner surface, but not all of them. So it'll be interesting to see what the final regulations allow the team to do. But these end plates are all about generating 
aerodynamic inwash around the front wheels and stopping that overtaking robbing outwashing effect that of course all the teams currently are trying to achieve and that's where you come and have a look at this barge board element here on the leading edge of the floor now i shouldn't really call it a barge board because the fi are calling it a in-wash generating fin or something like that it's a barge board and we're all going to call it barge boards let's be honest and that is something that's really important to the overall aerodynamic concept and how the FI are hoping that the dirty air that comes out of some of these parts and along the floor edge out the back of the car is going to be reduced. These parts are all to do with that and they're going to be mandated on all of the cars. Exactly how much design freedom is going to be allowed on them is a little unclear and we'll come back to that in a moment. But look along the edge of the floor here. You've got a little cutout on the edge of the floor. Again, is this indicative of a little bit of freedom around, around floor edge design? We'll have to wait and see what the final regulations say here because that is a big area of development at present in Formula One. Then finally, the thing that's got me really quite excited is the rear wing. Now, you may notice in this image here, it's got a DRS actuator on it. It's got one of those DRS pods in the center of the rear wing. And the 2026 cars will have those pods as will the current cars, but they won't have DRS. Now I'll come back to that point in a moment. The other point I wanted to mention before we start talking about DRS or the lack of it is this, the rear wing has got rear wing end plates once more. And that is for some teams other than Aston Martin, a welcome return. Of course, Aston Martin played around with their versions of rear wing end plates before they were banned uh, a couple of years ago, I think. But that is a proper rear wing end plate. How much development scope is allowed in those rear wing end plates? We'll have to wait and see, but that is gonna be an exciting area of technical freedom for the teams, I suspect. But when we take a slightly more detailed look in uh, taking a look over the shoulders of some of the FI engineers in their office at the concept wing design, you can see here quite clearly, it's a triple element rear wing design unlike the current twin element design. But as you can see with this highlighted section here, the, the rear wing is movable, as is the front wing. And we can see on this lovely bit of footage here, you can see the triple element front wing down from the four elements at present, or unless you're Mercedes, which is three and a half elements, essentially, if they're the version they're using in Canada, for sure. Then take a look at the CFD. You can see the high and low pressure areas on that very colorful image on the right hand side of the engineer's screens there. But when we take a slightly more detailed look at the front wing, you can see these two blue elements that are highlighted in this CAD image. They are the movable elements of the front wing. And this is not DRS. This is what it looks like in the FIA renders. The upper two elements of the, the rear wing will open at certain sections of the track, as will the front two, upper two elements of the front wing a certain elements of those track. And this is what the FI are calling both X mode and Z mode. X mode is where the car is running in a low drag configuration, trimmed out to not just for fuel economy, but for top speed. It'll help cars follow each other down the straight and teams will be able to adjust, I suspect, how much the effectiveness those wings have got, the angles involved. There'll be a maximum and a minimum, I suspect, of course, but the drivers will be in charge of activating this X mode. Then when you go into Z mode or Z mode, if you must talk like that in, in America, it is a high downforce configuration as you get into corners. Now that will be activated from the X mode as soon as the driver deactivates it, deactivates it manually or the driver touches the brake, very similar to the current DRS arrangement. Unlike DRS, the Z mode and X mode switch has absolutely nothing to do with where other cars are configured on the track. You don't have to be within one second to be able to enable the low drag mode. It's not an overtaking aid. It's an efficiency aid to allow the cars to follow each other more closely and hopefully race a little bit better. So what's making up for the lack of DRS? Well, we'll come to it, but I like to call it electro boost. And while it's really early days to look into some of the scope for development freedom for the teams, I just wanted to take a look at this really nice graphic of the car. This comes from inside the FIA servers, and it's quite nice to see it. It's got a lot to talk about on it, and I'm sure we're gonna be talking about, I know we're gonna be talking about this sort of stuff for over a year. Take a look at this, this section of the car. I still want to call them barge boards. I mean, because they are, aren't they? I'm not gonna call them the flow conditioning devices because it doesn't sound very interesting. They're barge boards. But look, this is a split 
twin element design. So our team's going to be able to experiment with these parts as the cars are developed. You get a slightly clearer look as I bring the car back around here. Look, you can see it very clearly. This is a twin element design. So are the teams going to be able to play around with that? We just don't know yet. Wait for those final regulations. But these rules are not done and dusted. I think there could be quite a lot to talk about. Then as we roll the car through the corner, if you like, you can see cooling louvers. That's something pretty similar to today. The teams will be able to do that. But at the back of the car, underneath the rear wing, you'll notice something missing. There's no lower beam wings. Those have been outlawed for the new generation of cars. So that's a big change. Teams have been spending so much time and energy developing those since 2022. All of that, they're gonna to have to start again, start learning. Then of course, the biggest factor of all. Look, at, look here and look at the shape of the floor. Note on this version, there's no cutout that we saw on the official renders. The floor is not fully ground effect. Now, we haven't seen the detailed regulations and the FI haven't flipped the car over for us to take a look at. What we do know is the floor is going to be a lot more simplified than the current generation of full ground effect cars. There's going to be partially a partially flat floor, so going back to the 2021 era cars, with a depowered diffuser. Now we don't quite know the detail of that. Of course, the team's going to be playing around huge amounts of what's going on underneath the floor, because that's where all the downforce comes with comes from on the current cars, but that is where a lot of the downforce cut is coming from. So that is a really, really important factor with these new cars. But it's not just about aerodynamics, of course. The safety on this new generation of cars is going to be increased yet again. The roll hoops for starters, they've been beefed up. They'll be a lot stronger in 2026. That's as a direct result of that scary crash with Joe Grand at Silverstone a couple of years back. But also along the side of the cockpit, the anti-intrusion panels have been strengthened to protect the driver's body in event of a really nasty crash. Then at the front of the car, there's been some quite significant changes underneath the skin, the front impact structure, which previously was just a single structure that could, would break off after a major impact or deform in a major impact. There's now a two stage front impact structure. So in a crash like Sergio Perez had at Monaco recently, for example, the front impact structure and a head-on collision will deform, but then there'll be a secondary frontal impact structure which will protect the driver in a secondary impact. So that's a big, well, protection for the driver's feet and legs. So a very important change for the cars there. The FIA though, interestingly say, these systems shouldn't add a massive amount more weight to the car, which is quite a surprise. So I think there's some real innovation gone in, in terms of the engineering of those parts as well. And of course, speaking of engineering innovation, and you thought I'd forgotten this, didn't you? The power units are gonna be quite different in 2026 to what we have now. We've already spoken quite a bit about that on the run up to this launch because those regulations have been out for a while. But the, the headline story here is Formula One is banning fossil fuels. Each manufacturer is gonna have to develop its own bio waste derived fuel. And I think that's gonna be super exciting. No MGUH anymore, of course. And the drivers are gonna have a lot more electrical power to deal with 350 kilowatts. That's a huge amount actually, way up from the 150 kilowatts of electrical energy available to the drivers at present. And of course, the electrical energy, that hybrid system, MGUK or the MGU, as we'll probably just end up calling it now because there's only one, will be able to be used by the drivers for an electrical boost or an electro boost to help them overtake. And that and how they use it is really gonna spice up the racing. And I think is a lot more pure than the old DRS systems. So the next question and the final question, I guess that we all have to ask is, will the new cars in 2026 look anything like this model? Well, the answer is actually probably not because the teams aren't allowed to do any aerodynamic development work on these cars within these rules until the 1st of January, 2025. Once they've started that development, then they get, all, they get over a year to develop the cars before the first race of the 2026 season. So all of these little details, all of these design directions on this show car, they're gonna be a lot more intricate. They're gonna look a lot more different and the teams are gonna find all of those interesting avenues that they always do. But this is a great starting point. And of course, as I mentioned, the rules aren't entirely final yet. There's a few more details to be worked out but by the end of June, we're expecting a detailed set of technical regulations to be released. It might be a little bit later than that because uh, that's the hell the timescales work sometimes. But this will be a really exciting new era of Formula One with smaller, lighter, and potentially faster in a straight line at least cars that should be really great at motor racing.